Uh, I've seen it happen a lot in best of threes where, you know, the first person will get behind, he'll just try to secure that second win so he can take it on the third game. Right. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, this is a uh, yeah. Um, uh, Kula can feel a little can feel a little can feel confident right now because he knows he does have the flexibility to uh, to lose a game. But if he wins this next game, he's he's gonna go ahead and move on to the next round. At the bottom right, we do have the red proto is gonna go ahead and be BCN COD BCN Cotton on the far left bottom far left. We're gonna see Akula spawning as the blue Zergy McFerguson. We're seeing some cross air positions, which could mean that we may see some Bane Link's shenanigans happening very soon. Not Bane Link, Muta, I'm sorry. That didn't even make sense. Mutas. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see what we can do with the, uh... Trio does not like Mutas. I don't think any Protoss in his right mind likes Mutas. Ha! We will see what happens, though. I wonder if Tron's gonna pick up on this. I'd love to see Tron do the same thing he the same thing he did last game, where he plopped that pylon down at the natural and the third. I actually, I really do think that paid off. Oh uh, yeah, I think it helped <laughs> out uh, quite a bit. It did put the uh, Zerg uh, way behind, but he was able to come back with that little Zerg or that little Roche push and uh, hold. Oh, I think I think you may have called the coolest strategy. We are seeing a pretty, we are seeing a very fast gas. We may see the roaches return, or we may see some baneling shenanigans going up. Maybe my sixth sense was tingling. We are seeing a standard spirited forge fast expand on this map. I think that's why B. San Cod picked it because he feels confident and comfortable forge fast expanding. Oh yeah, this map is very good for expansions. Um, it's also I think it's very defendable for a, a third as well. Ooh, and this little overlord is gonna actually have vision, I think, of this pylon, which is actually which can which which means a ling any any lings units can go ahead and plop them, go ahead and get rid of that and get rid of the get rid of this little scouting pesky probe. That's actually really nice pathing that we saw there. So the spawning pool is about to finish. We are seeing the uh, cannon before Nexus here, just being safe. Doesn't want that ling shenanigans going on anymore. I don't think he's planning on blocking the uh, natural this time. He doesn't want to have the have to deal with the rush maybe. Haha <laughs> yeah. Yeah he learned once. He learned learned the hard way I suppose. Well, let's see if we see the speed come up or if we're gonna see a baneling sense. I do think we're gonna see something very something tricky tricky happening very soon and this probe is gonna be alive for a little bit and could be able to see the tech if he's lucky. A f nice pack of drones are gonna get pulled off and that could be a big sign that something weird's going down. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, that's no problem. Yeah, that might happen quite often, depending on how many times people walk in and out the door. Oh, don't worry about it. Big strange buddy is going down now. A little bit late on the uh, the fast expo. Not, I don't know what uh, what build this is. Pretty fancy stuff. <laughs> this really is early. a pretty uh, large wall. This is this is as large as the uh, not wall. This is this is as large as the ramps get, I think. Yep, standard Intigo ramp. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So we're seeing two gateways. We might see some double zealot pressure. Go ahead and get that chrono boost on. Um, I, I, I hope, uh, and we are seeing a third gateway down. I think right now BC and Cod is just concerned. He is putting down two more cans, so I think he is smelling. He is smelling some shenanigans that may be a, may be a brewing. Uh, three gates down purely to make that wall, and then two more cannons. I, do you think this is going to be enough? I think this is plenty to uh, to hold off any kind of rush, even with a uh, ro full roach army. I think he could, well, not full, but this, uh, <laughs> the standard 10, 11 roach push, he could easily hold this off with three cannons and gateway wall. Nice, excellent, excellent. Well, we are seeing the roach one. We're seeing expansion, expansion pretty darn late. Last game we saw the third go down at just about six minutes from Akula. So Akula definitely has something t uh, different on his mind that he wants to do. do two gases going down. What does this mean to you that we're, that we're seeing uh, such a low econ from Zerg and also two gases very fast? Do you think? Do you think we maybe will see some? Um, 
Oh, oh. <laughs> your six cents. Your six cents. <laughs> that baneliness. And there's the baneliness. We may see a bust, but will this be enough to hold it? All I'm really happy that um, BCN BCN cards wall doesn't have any pylons in it, which is uh, which is obviously the biggest target. And um, this is going to be. I think this is going to be very t tricky for our cooler to mi to micro. <clears throat> yeah, I think he's a uh, you know. Uh, baneling Ling is not easy to micro. You always want to keep your Ling's in front and your Baneling's not blowing up on needless things. Yeah. Which, uh, totally. You know, I'm, I've been recently switching to Zerg and I found ZBZ quite the uh, quite the challenge. You have to uh, micro your Ling's out of the way while, you know, we do see a dancing Zergs now. Uh, <laughs> got, a case of the, got a case of the party going on here. He's going to be dancing. <laughs> oh, and he's the, and wow, a lot of bailings going down. That is all of his gas. He's he does not he does if he could afford it, he'd have a zero ling army. So is that what happens when uh, zerglings party too hard? They just get a little over over the edge and turn straight in these giant <laughs> these giant things. That's their pot. That's their beer belly. I guess. You could yeah, say. totally. Yeah, that's the that's the illuminant elu elucid uh, beer belly. And it looks beautiful. I think uh, I think I still have the little color mod thing going on, and it looks it just looks very, very pretty. In the main base, we see, we see the Lara, which makes me think that um, Nidus could be a po could be a really nice possibility, as this is cross positions, and that that Overlord can go ahead and uh, can go ahead and find a sneaky place for it. And this is a pretty large map. If you see at the north of uh, Truron, I mean BCN Cod's main, um, that is a really nice place, really to uh, proxy gates, proxy factory, proxy anything. You could really hide something sneaky right in that little nook. The nooks and crannies. Yeah, buddy. Right. Well, we do see a single roach here with this lean baneling army. Uh, not sure what's going to go on. Maybe a bust into a little zergling push. Cod uh, is trying to get out a few of the stalkers and sentries and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. So sauce. Kula sees all of the uh, Churro's base, or Cod's base, seeing all of these cannons, all of the uh, gateways that he has thrown down, throwing down three more now too. Now, right now, BC and Cod's economy is just booming. It's uh, it's it's gonna. I think it's gonna be way stronger than Zergi's. As Zergi's on two gases right now, which and he's going for Baneling, Banelings, which I think are gonna, which I think are really gonna. I think he's gonna be stuck on this composition for for quite for quite a while into this game. So we do have six, seven, eight, nine gates going up. So I think we are gonna see a very powerful gateway, um, gateway attack going off of these two bases. Here's the really cool thing about having all of these gateways in the forge in the front here. Banelings have to hit these five, six, seven times before they actually will fall because of the amount of damage it takes to actually knock down a warp gate. He doesn't have any pylons or cannons in the front, so the cannons can just open fire while the gateways are being hit. Yeah. Also, he is going to have a lot of stalkers, which are going to be able to range attack this. So it is very, uh, that is a lot of banelings. It is going to be, uh, <laughs> it's going to be quite difficult to hold this, but I think it's possible. Um... Cool beans. Um, wait, who's stuttering? Uh, I'm not sure which one of us is which one of us is stuttering. I am really hot. That might be just messing me up a little bit here. But um, yeah, we're seeing uh, we're seeing mostly stalkers in this composition, which just kind of which just which does make me a little concerned. As these banelings, m I think these banelings are gonna do uh, are gonna do pretty fine against a pack of stalkers. It's gonna be crazy. See the twilight and the row down. I wouldn't be surprised to see. Oh, we are going to see a warp prism. Very nice to see Protoss and Zerg on cross air positions, and the Protoss going to go ahead and take advantage. What I really like to see here is a sentry drop. That would be kind of awesome. Mm hmm. And be able to deny any kind of uh, bust that was planning on going down. Uh, a lot of roaches on the way here. Lots and lots of roaches. Yeah, right now all that larva is going into the army, and we oh, and I and I think I to completely missed this. We do have the upgrade for the overlords. I'm not sure if we have speed. I'd assume so, unless we we'd see a very rare slow drop. But this is this could be really devastating if it's on if it's on open ground as well. Oh, the adorable overlords! The little banelings wanted to get in, and they just couldn't. Yeah, uh, the warp zone has to get out of the way of those overlords. So many banelings. 
Ooh, both players know exactly what know, know the harassment that they both want to do. So this is going to be a crisis manage, management situation right here. You see a lot of banelings in these overlords. This is 100% banelings in these overlords. And about nine of them, nine overlords, going to go ahead and spew that nasty gunk. It's everywhere. Oh, and they have speed as well. Didn't notice this. Oh, going to get the pylon. It's going to go straight for the mineral line. Maybe he can manage to, uh, oh. You know what, though? A lot of the banelings were, uh, were, you know what? That was actually very efficient for, uh, BC and Cod. He still has most of his gates up. He did lose, uh, quite a few drones, but does have the second base still high on drones. going to be able to hold this off very well. Yeah, he lost. He lost a lot of economy. He's a technic. He's officially on one base against a two base Zerg. But this Zerg hasn't taken his gases yet. I don't know how standard that is. I think. I feel like maybe he wanted to put a third down a bit sooner. But perhaps this is. But this is probably just part of his grand master scheme to get that drop in there, which completely took uh, B. Sankard, um out of uh, B. Sankard's army. Just wasn't in position to. It wasn't in position, but yeah, a lot of those banelings got wasted, or a lot of those banelings just didn't do those that big critical hits that I think he was hoping for. Yeah, those uh, like I said, the gateway positioning and stuff that he had was very good. Uh, he also the way his probes were in the line that he had, one baneling would hit one probe and just get a kill with each probe. So he did manage to get like six or seven banelings out of the way by just making a line of probes. And the DT uh, tech is out. The DTs are on the map, putting in so much hurt to these little defenseless roaches. Oh, do we have... There's an Overseer being morphed in right now. Good, good, good. Way over here in the back, he can still do some damage before he gets there. Yeah, that's exactly he what he's doing. He's going to out these roach... Uh, quite a few more roaches, I think. Yeah, splitting up these DTs. This isn't the first time Truon has... Uh, has been played with the with the sharp sharp sights of the DT. Oh, is he gonna get the lair tech? Oh, so close, almost getting the lair. Very low HP lair right there. <laughs> oh, but these DTs are gonna walk right by. Will they be able to put in that DPS? Oh, lair. oh gosh. Big job. That is a very critical thing that Zerg needs in order to play. He, uh, he didn't grab speed before the lair was over. Uh, he also didn't grab any kind of other tech. He, uh, he has to now go back to lair on a different hatchery or maybe throw another one up and go back to lair on it. Yeah, we're seeing two more hatcheries go down the macro hatch. Gonna go, gonna go ahead and join the party. And this uh, this hatchery doesn't look like it's gonna be turned into a lair anytime soon. I wonder if Akalu feels like he needs to go ahead and put on the pressure, put on the hurt right now, as his opponent is technically still on one base and is trying to work his pro production back up. Uh, BC and Cod just making more and more DTs. Those little Dark Templars can be used for so much, so much damage they can do. Gonna throw in some Zealots with the mix as well. Yeah, very nice. Even with even once even once your opponent gets the uh, detection, you can go ahead and use these DTs. Go ahead and morph them, and uh, and you're gonna have a very strong unit. Yeah, that Archon can do quite a bit of uh, tanking ability. He also does quite a bit of damage now with that four range upgrade, giving him a little bit of shooting over zealot capabilities. Gonna run these DTs. Oh, he didn't get it. Still managed to pick off the third of Akua. Did not get a cancel. It was knocked out. So that is 300 minerals. Gone. Now I think Akua is going to go ahead and try and grab his third again. I feel like Akua is feeling like he's in a very, uh, very uh, passive position. He wants to go ahead and just mass up, mass up his army and get his economy back on track. Yeah, plus two on the way for BC and Cod. Going to get more and more of the gateways open to warp gates. Trying to get more uh, probes back on his main. Maybe go for a third soon. Don't know. He still does have the DTs tech, and uh, you know, once you have DTs, it's just a uh, in an always, always a threat that could be in your base at any time. Yeah, Kula's gonna go ahead and take some sneaky bases at the far left. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know if Truon's gonna be able to. I don't know if Truon's gonna scout this. I wonder.